Allison to welcome you to the Are You Ready to Start Your Podcast panel. Um, I'll kind of repeat this throughout, but feel free to throw questions in the chat for our, our lovely two panelists. Um, so we're going to start just with some intros. So I'll ask Pam Pamela and Nadia to introduce themselves, and then we'll kind of take you through, um, you know, starting a podcast and all the, the relevant information there. So why don't we start with Pamela? Tell us a little bit about yourself, your podcast. Um, we can kind of get rocking and rolling. Absolutely. Well, I want to welcome everybody to this amazing platform. Um, I hope you get some nuggets out of here as we go through the session. Well, my name is Pamela Stone. I am actually here in Columbus, Ohio. My podcast is What's Next Podcast for Women. Um, it was the created out of helping women or empowering women to go after their what's next by conquering the what the I can't. How many times we say I can't or what if? So the podcast, we conquer that um, in several ways where I'll bring on some amazing co-hosts and we'll do an interview style, um, talk about the obstacles that they faced and how they overcome them, as well as then I also do some teaching on the podcast. Um, So that's it for me. And, and Nadia, tell us a little bit about yourself, about your podcast. Yes, ma'am. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I am Nadia Francois. I am the owner and CEO of What's Your Superpower TV and Anthology. And I am from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. My podcast is called Power Conversations Podcast. And what we talk about on on Power Conversations is women that have overcome adversity and pushed through to their purpose. So it is very interesting because most of us are entrepreneurs. I'm an entrepreneur myself. So most of my guests are entrepreneurs or coaches, authors um, in those areas. And we just indulge in what they have overcome and talk about what they are doing now and how that obstacle pushed them to continue to push through to their purpose. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm so excited for us to kind of dig in um, to your podcast and how you grew them and starting them. And I'll just give a quick intro of myself. So my name is Becky and I work at the podcast technology company Acast, um, where I help a lot of different varieties of creators kind of grow their shows, start their shows and kind of give them support along that process. So um, I've helped a lot of people start shows, but I'm so interested to hear, hear from you too about you know your experience. So we're going to start with the basics. So I'd love to hear from both of you about, you know, getting your podcast up and running. What did that journey look like? Like what what were kind of the key steps from your end? So maybe let's start with Nadia and then do Pamela. We'll kind of flip it this time. Yeah. So the key steps um, that I started, well, I'll just put a little background in it. I started um, the podcast earlier this year. Um, it was kind of a follow up to my TV series. Um, well, an overflow, I'll put it like that, <laughs> more of an overflow uh, for my TV series because I had so many women that were interested in being interviewed. And so um, I started my podcast on the platform Anchor. And so Anchor um, is pretty simple to use. I've had a, pla- a a podcast some years ago, and it's the same po- um, platform that I use then. And it's pretty simple to use. It's a free platform, and it um, puts your uh, it broadcasts your podcast out to several different platforms, and you only have to upload it once. So that is one of the great things about. Um, podcasting, you can find different platforms that um, you can upload to because there's more than just Anchor, but that's the one that I used. And they will send your podcast out to several uh, different platforms like iHeart and Pandora, Google, Apple, etc. And so um, that's how I got started as far as setting it up. Now, when I record my podcast. I don't necessarily record in Anchor. I record them separately. Um, I use StreamYard. Um, A lot of people use Zoom or Riverside or some other. You can also record in Anchor. Don't get me wrong, but that's just not um, the way I, I do it. Just for other reasons, I do other things with my recordings. So, um, but uh, uh, 
outside of that, um, I haven't really faced any challenges as as per se. I, it's actually been a joy and a pleasure to do this podcast. And I actually enjoy it more than the TV because people get a little more personal with you. You know, they want to let it out. They want the help. They want the relief, the release. And so it, it's actually been very rewarding to welcome these ladies onto the podcast and give them, um, you know, the help that they need or just the outlet, a safe space. And some tips for getting your idea going. Well, before you can get it going, have an outline of how you would like your show to flow. Um, It's very important that you do that prior to setting up your podcast because, well, recording, because you will have all of it there so that it can flow well. You will know what you're going to ask of your guests. You will know your date that you will publish. You will know the dates that you will put post it to your platforms, et cetera. And so those are my, my key tip is start with an outline. Your foundation is everything. So I'll stop there and give Pamela a chance to chime on in. (laughs) Thank you, Nadia. Well, my journey actually began on Blog Talk Radio. Um, I started the plot. I started the podcast there um, more so just to get a feel. I wanted to see if I really, I really wanted to see if I like it there. And and reason why I chose Blog Talk Radio because it's a more intimate setting. Um, it stays within the group. It's just like a TV. It stays in their group and it doesn't go anywhere else. So I felt that if I even had a little bit of of kudos or a reception or a recognition, then, OK, I'll move it out further. Um, so I did. I am now on Anchor, as just as Nadia had talked about. And funny enough, I don't record an Anchor as well. I'm like Nadia. I have other um other avenues and things that I want to use with the recording. So I use, I too use StreamYard. Um, I really, I did, I have used though Be Live and I have used others, but StreamYard seems to be the one that works for my podcast. One tip that I would recommend for you is make sure you, your sound is good. The, you know, we hear so many, you hear the people, the crackling and everyone's like, well, I don't understand why the crackling is, or they don't understand the type of, of a, appropriate equipment. Make sure that your microphone is the best that you can afford. Um, a lot, we hear a lot of the, the sounds. You, everyone thinks that the microphone don't pick up. It picks up everything. So be cautious of the equipment that you use. That would be my first tip starting out the gate. And I'm with Nadia. Have an outline of what you what you basically want to cover, how you want your show to flow and the questions that you want to answer. Um, but I love podcasts. I really never thought that I would like it at all. I, this is my baby. I really can see myself doing this for a very long, long time. Um, I never thought that I would, but I do love podcasting. Take some time to get used to talking in front of people or even talking by yourself. There's times that, you know, you'll be talking to yourself, but I still love it no matter what. It's interesting the the key things you, you both picked up on, like you know, I used to be a producer and so telling people like you, the mic on your phone is, is totally fine. You just have to know how to hold it. And you just have to kind of give your set yourself up for success. Cause if you hear it, the mic will hear it. Um, and I, I think you both touched on this sort of, um, you know, more broadly, but what I always tell podcasters in my role is just have a podcast where you love the idea, because if you love the idea, you'll keep doing it. Don't go into it to want to, you, you don't want to be the next, you know, millionaire podcaster, go into it doing something you love. And I think you've both really like touched on that and, you know, make, having an outline. I think, you know, if you love it enough, you're going to put time into it. And that is, that's key from, from where I'm sitting. Um, so we're going to kind of shift into another key piece, right? So you have this podcast, it's all, it's all set up. You have a hosting platform, but how do you find an audience? So I'd love if both of you could talk about, you know, community building for your podcast and how you've approached that. Because I know you both have kind of different strategies that you've implemented. Um, so I'd love to hear, Pamela, why don't you start talking to me about, you know, community building and podcasting? 
So the community building, I used um, social media. Social media is big. And for me, I've used Facebook and Instagram because I'm able to connect to the two potential the potential listeners and followers to the show. So I use the, I do a lot of that. And one thing that I do, which I won't be able to do to, do today, but I always do some behind the scenes type of thing. So they'll get to see what, see what I do to get to being ready for the show and getting prepared for the show. It's not all easy as we come in and be like, Hey, and we're moving so through. It's not, not like that. You know, it does take a lot of preparation and it takes a lot of practice. So I do right now, I'm doing a lot of behind the scenes. So the followers and guests can, can see how it is. And so we can connect more. And then I also do um, a lot of word of mouth when I talk every place or when I'm out in the community, I let everyone know about the podcast and what it does and who it serves. And so Absolutely. That's how I get my um, how I get the followers and building up my community as well as Instagram. You know, it's a picture or words type of type of thing. So you can I put keywords in, you know, and I always try to get some fill fill fillers from there and see if anybody will even nudge on a, on a keyword that I put in. And, and may it be just so crazy. I just want to see <laughs> if someone will really think the word that I'm putting out there or the, the idea that I put up there, if they'll even bite on it. So that's what I do. Do you have any, you know, secret nugget keywords that, you know, you found really worked surprisingly? Funny enough, I have lived living your best life. Man, that's been really hitting, really hitting a lot. It's living your best life and um, empowerment. Those are the two words that's been really hitting hard, hitting and connecting to my key audience right now. To hear, and I, I feel like I have to now follow the empowerment tag on Instagram. So, I'm right. um, not. And Nadia, I know you you had sort of an existing audience that you have kind of capitalized on for your podcast, but I'd love to hear how maybe community building for you has looked a little different or how it's looked the same. Absolutely. Um, so with my podcast, of course, like I previously stated, I had the television show um, prior to that, but you would be surprised that the audience is really not the same. It can be, but, you know, you have to build those audiences separately. And so um, even with having an existing, existing audience, I have to continually promote my podcast. And I do that on social media as well. Um, I found that Facebook is very valuable in the podcasting community um, because of the groups. I'm not big on posting things. Uh, well, I'm, go I'm gonna say this. I do post from my personal page, don't get me wrong, but relating to my business, um, such as the podcast, I like to post from business pages um, and I like to interact as a business because you receive a different um type of reception right from the public and so if they see you um just willy-nilly in then they're not gonna your audience isn't gonna take it serious so if they see you taking it serious treating it um as serious as it is as a business because of course we are making money from podcasting ultimately so you want to treat it as a business and promote it as as that and do in doing that on Facebook I have found that the groups are very very valuable there are some groups there that help you find guests there are groups be a guest because as a podcast host, that is a way that you can get your podcast out is by visiting and being a guest on other people's podcasts, right? And so I do that a lot. Um, I receive a lot of my um, interviews from Facebook groups um, and they are very good interviews. They are very good networking opportunities and they expand the reach, right? They tell people about it. Um, another way that I build up on the podcast is when someone books, I create them a personalized graphic, right? To show that they're going to be on the show with me, make it really fun looking, um, 
and give their date of their episode is going to stream. And so once you do that, that is allowing your visitor to post about what? Your podcast, okay? So that's expanding your reach into their network. So that is a way that I build my community as well. And then I receive emails saying, oh, I I saw your podcast, you know, such and such episode. I would love to come on, dot, 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 you know? And so those are ways that I have built my community. I also have my own personal Facebook group. Now, it isn't specifically for the podcast but it is for female entrepreneurs, which is my niche, right? And so I continue to um, interview female entrepreneurs. So that is a way to continue to network with them, build them up, meet new people, and ultimately gain them as as a guest on my podcast. I think both of you talked about, but in particular, kind of the guest swapping and, and going on other podcasts and bringing people on your podcasts. That's, I tell literally the, the biggest media companies we work with to like the indie podcaster who has three listens on their podcast. That's the same recommendation. So it's so, it's so great that you guys are talking about that. Cause I think for new podcasters, that can be sort of scary. Like, do you ask, do you not ask? So I think it's great that you guys have, have, or you both have both started doing this. Um, I know we sort of have a promotion section and a community section. I'd actually love to hear if there's one thing that without fail, you know, every time your podcast posts, you do. So be it, you always post on Instagram the day of drop, or you always push it in a certain Facebook group. I want one um, as a really like concrete takeaway. So Pamela, Nadia, whoever has has one first, feel free. So I'll just go ahead and piggyback off of what I said already. One thing that I do is give a graphic out and post it um, prior to their, if if time permits, (laughs) prior to their visit and then uh, definitely the date of the release of their, uh, their episode. I'm with Nadia. I do the same thing. I do graphics. For the for my co-hosts for the debt for the week, um, I call them co-hosts, so they feel like we're doing we're t- teaming this together. Um, I do it. Um, my first one is sent out Mon- Sunday, and then the day of the show, just to keep it consistent. Um, and then I ask my guests to do it as well, my co-hosts as well, to push it out. So I'm with you. I do the do the same thing as you do. But the key takeaway: graphics, graphics to your guests. Um, and I think just on the promotion front, um, Nadia, you touched on this a little bit with the Facebook groups, but do you have any kind of starting points for a new show or a new podcaster maybe doesn't have the connections they need yet? Um, obviously Facebook groups are one of those places, but you know, where do you find the connections with other podcasters to kind of do guesting? You know, is it cold outreach? You know, talk us, talk, talk us through that. And maybe we start with Pamela or Nadia or whatever. Pamela, help yourself. Okay. Um, so someone that is just starting out again, I do, I'm with Nadia. I create a group, but I first started out was doing some finding my niche. Who's my niche audience. And my niche audience are women that are in corporate who are sitting at a desk and wanting more. So I go out and I look for those women. Um, Facebook is where I look at as where I've been connecting with a lot of my targeting audience, as well as LinkedIn. I put those fillers out there and I always start with the pain point. Are you sitting somewhere at a desk? Are you miserable and you don't know your what's next, but you wanting to work on your what's your you're on your what's next? but you need to get rid of the I can'ts and the I and what ifs. And I start off with that every time. And I get so many hits on finding that, hitting that pain point. And that pain point I post again in Facebook and in LinkedIn. I do a little bit in Instagram, um, but so far those two platforms has really worked for me. And I'll agree, um, social media is definitely a great place. Um, But outside of social media, um, most of us podcasters do a little public speaking or networking or something of that sort where we are out talking to the public. So I utilize those moments um, to gain 
guests or listeners. Um, because like you said, if they're not um, a social media person, um, but they are a podcast person, you can, you know, get them into your community that way. Um, also, radio. Now, I know everyone doesn't have um, a budget for that type of advertising, but radio advertising is a very good way um, to gain listeners for your podcast if you're just starting out. The, the like overlap of someone who's already engaging with audio content, moving them to another platform or another kind of media is I think a really smart strategy. Um, and also I love, I love Pamela, what you said about leading your pitch with a problem that you can solve. I think that is brilliant. And I am going to take that and bring that to my podcast. Pitch is what a problem that you can solve. Um, that's, I, I, I feel like I've learned something new. So, um, okay. So we're going to sort of shift into, so you have a podcast, but now you're building a brand or you've kind of incorporated a podcast into a brand. So you both have sort of interesting journeys here. So I'd like to start with Nadia talking about, you know, taking this TV series and spinning it into, into audio and what that process looked like. And then Pamela, I know you sort of had the, the kind of opposite trajectory with a, with a, um, a magazine. So let's start with Nadia and talking about, you know, spinning TV to podcast to spoiler magazines. Um, but yeah, and then we'll go to Pamela. Okay, certainly. So like I said, I started with the TV series um, prior to the pandemic. And um, I was doing live interviews, right? And so doing the live interviews, I was able, it was like I would set up days of the week, like one or two days out of the week that I would do the interviews in person and people can schedule and come in and do their interview with me. Well, when COVID hit and everyone got freaked out and scared out of their mind, including me, <laughs> I had to go virtual, guys. And so in doing that, um, I was like, and like I said, I had an over, like a, a back load of interviews to complete. And I'm not one to want to waste content. And so I was like, oh my God, this content is so good because once again, these are people pouring their hearts out, you know, and telling you very intimate parts of their life and they're expecting someone to hear it. And I'm like, I cannot, you know, not broadcast this because first of all, it could help someone else. And secondly, as I just stated, I don't want to, you know, throw out some good content. And so I started praying about it because also with TV, we have limited time slides, of course. So even if I had all the time in the world, I had too many interviews. <laughs> so I transitioned over to the podcast. And like I said, a couple of years back, I had a podcast. Um, that was like just motivational moments. It was just me. And I would go on for four or five minutes and do just some motivational, empowering words for women. And then that was it. So I was like, hmm, that would be nice if I had the podcast interviewing the ladies. And so that is how I integrated the podcast, because once I went virtual, I was using StreamYard already to record the TV series. And so I just continue to use StreamYard and then just extract the audio, of course, and post it up to the platforms. And so it was so easy um, to do that before I discovered editing. <laughs> And so once I discovered editing, I was like, oh, my God, I didn't edit anything, which it, you don't have to edit. Now, don't get me wrong. Podcasting is not that hard. Um, but if you want to advertise or put a commercial or a sponsorship or something like that, that is the part of editing that I'm speaking of. And so what I did was start to add my commercials into the recording. And so once I began to do that, that made it like all truly come together because I had my interview, I had my 
advertising or sponsorship. And then I had, of course, the podcast intro. Um, and all of that is what makes your podcast. And so um, that is kind of how it all folded over into the podcast um, from TV. And then um, I do some other work within my business where I work with female entrepreneurs and authors that release books really often. <laughs> and so, um, you know, as authors, we are always looking for outlets for our books. And so that opened a new outlet because I started doing a book tour on my podcast as well, y'all. So there are um, many ways that you can spin a podcast to, you know, fit what's going on now and also sustain your current, you know, your overview or your original idea for your podcast. And so, like I said, I, I did the book tour and that's just something I'm going to do once a quarter. But um, I did a book tour where I interviewed ladies for like three or four hours back to back. And then we posted them on the podcast. Like, But I had my editor put two or three episodes together. So they would make, you know, a nice long because the interviews were only like 20 minutes. And so um, we put those together, made the book tour, and that, that ended up being like seven different episodes. So saying that to say, you can release those on a weekly basis. That means you just got seven weeks of content. You know, um, you can release that that what I did, I took a week and released all of them one per day. So it was like the book tour was June 1st through the 7th, you know, and got all those lined up. You already have them recorded. So, hey, you can line them up how you need, schedule them as you need. And so um, in doing that, I ended up curating a magazine, an online magazine that also spotlights those authors. So as you can see, it all rolls over and you can build a brand. You can make money from it and not just little bits of money, depending on how you, you know, structure it. That's why I was talking about foundation. Um, but as you can hear, <laughs> I have um, kind of grown it rather quickly. And so that that's my story on branding um, and implementing the podcast into an existing brand. Yeah. And I think just hopping in, oh, Pamela, I'm going to ask you the same question, but hopping in too, to say, you know, having seven episodes on one topic, that's also like a moment for the show, right? You can pitch that to platforms. You can pitch that to any context in the media that you want to promote the show as, as a package to say, this is the big moment for the show. Um, and, and I loved what you said, Nadia, about, you know, it, everything sort of feeding into one another. And even if the audiences are different, like there is some synergy that helps grow the whole brand. And, and I thought that was so, that was so brilliant. Yes. And um, I also do, um, book, um, Press releases when That's I do so those type of yeah those type of events. Um, I do press releases because I'm doing a social media takeover next week for wow. a book, a book, um, not a book, a summit like what we're doing here. But the visionary uh, would like her uh, her speakers to be interviewed prior to mm -hmm. the summit. And so that's what we're going to do. I called it a social media takeover or a podcast takeover. And we're just going to do those. I'm going to do 15 minute interviews back to back next week for three days and just roll it out. I love that. I love that so much. And I think that sort of leads us very nicely into Pamela. So your, your story is sort of having your podcast be the thing that started the brand and kind of spun out into other things. So I'd love to hear you kind of talk about what that looked like for you, you know, um, how, how you kind of built a brand around it and, and honed the idea for the brand to, to kind of reach other media. 
Absolutely. It's spooky that Nadia is talking exactly. I know everyone's probably thinking, okay, I know they have, we have collaborated. We really haven't, but each, our stories are so similar. I use my podcast um, as, as my first outlet. And then now I do part of the podcast. Of course, we talk about the, um, the pain points that we are, are to address. And then halfway through the show, I stop and we do something fun, but one of the fun things is book on the shelf. And so I talk to different, I bring on different authors and talk about their book. Um, I have so many, I have so many, I'm like you, Nadia, I have so many people are like, yeah, I wanted to come and talk on my, on my, on your show about your book. So I did that. I've taken that um, further so now I have not only have the podcast with the book on the shelf now has spun into my magazine, which is Vision Made, because I did that because a lot of the authors, um, as well as guests were coming on like, I have a vision. I just don't know what to do with it or how do I get it out or better yet, what do you think? And they're always asking me and I'm like, I can't make your vision come true. I can help you, but I can't get it to come true. I can't get it, do it. You know, it's the, all about your vision. So the podcast actually had created another avenue of an outlet, which is the magazine, which I'm so proud of. And that, and the next venture I'm working on is the television of the vision made and doing something with it. But absolutely, the podcast has opened up so many doors. And I'm with Nadia. If you do it right, if you create your foundation, you can make so much money in it, but you have to do it the right way. So I agree with you. Next section is going to be monetization. Um, but I, I just wanted to point out too, like this, this kind of brilliant thing the two of you do, which is you are thinking about what is the audience going to benefit from? So if someone encounters the magazine, it's a bit shorter form, you know, it's easier than listening to a 20, 30 minute podcast. They can read the you know text and then say, I want to listen to that. So it feels like you're very much thinking about what the audience needs or wants and using it as a way to kind of that you know the podcast is the nice the nice um sun of the e of the solar system i guess this metaphor is sort of going off the rails but uh that i think is um it's just really really great to see the two of you doing and, and it's really smart thank you yeah. So monetization though. So we've it's come up a few times. I feel like every, every other day, someone in the podcast industry is, is um, saying, how, how can I make money? Or, you know, is getting a hundred million dollars from Spotify to, to kind of make content for them. So I'd love to hear, you know, what are the options for someone who wants to make money? You know, they, they have this beautiful podcast they love. It's a labor of love. What are the options to make money? Like talk, talk us through that. So I found, um, of course, commercials like 10 second, 20 second, 30 second commercials, um, features. You can charge for people like some people charge for you to be a guest during their podcast. I don't. Um, but some people do. So that's an avenue. Um, and like I said, the commercial ads. And then also sponsorships, which is a little bit different than a commercial ad. And and also um, there was one other thing I was going to say. I kind of lost it. But those um, avenues can generate a, a very good streams depending on the, the, the platforms that you have your podcast going to. Right. And so just say you have it going to Apple, Google, you know, the mainstream uh, platforms, that is how you monetize, right? So you monetize off of their subscribers. So if you were to say, okay, I'm going to, um, well, if you would like a commercial here on my podcast, you have the ability to reach dot 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 millions of listeners right and that number comes from the number of subscribers or the the reach that those podcasting platforms have and so that builds your credibility and all you have to do is provide some good content and also promote 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 because we also built in the platforms that we up, upload to 
they some of them in, or you can pay for them to also advertise your podcast mm -hmm. or put it like in their ads. And so that's a way that you can um, gain potential advertisers and then, you know, use the the foundation of the platforms that you're uploading to in order to capture that audience that you need. Yeah. And what we say just on the, like being a hosting platform or working for a hosting platform, what we always say is, you know, meet your audience where you are, where they are. So mm -hmm. I may be listening, like my preferred podcast app is Pocket Casts, which is mm -hmm. this brilliant, I love it so much. And I could talk about Pocket Casts forever. Mm -hmm. But if a podcast doesn't submit to Pocket Casts, then I can't access it. And I am a, a total, you know, separate piece of the audience that is missing. So from a best practices perspective, I think that's so important as a, as a means to grow audience. Growing audience leads to making money. So um, yeah. Pamela, I would love to hear, I, you had a, a really interesting thing that you mentioned when we chatted before on Monday about the buy a coffee method. So I'd love to hear broadly about monetization, but I would love for you to talk specifically about that as well, because I think it was it was really interesting. I really, I'm really trying to, I'm really tapping into buy me a coffee. Um, it's a way to one, to draw people into hearing more about the, my podcast, as well as I add the caveat. If you want to hear more, if you don't want to hear, if you don't want to see the podcast to disappear, I'm asking for your support. And then they can get, give, donate, you know, from, I always ask for $5, all the way up to $1,000. But I do that on every show and I, I post it on every place. So you see, buy me a coffee on, uh, and all they have to do is click on there. And I give a little story of, you know, what the money would be used for and how it would benefit the podcast. Um, so it, and it has drawn, believe it or not, at first I was a little leery. I'm going to tell you this because I'm, you know, you are not sure about how things are working, especially when you're used to this, the traditional way, which Nadia even talked about the, the traditional way where, you know, you have this, um, the sponsorships and you do the ad space. And I'm like you, Nadia, I don't charge for people to come on my podcast because I feel that, you know, I feel we get more, we're benefiting more from the, those opportunities where we're opening up and every, anybody can come on. Of course we get to, um, we get to do some filter through who's going to be on our show. But I feel that if you um, open up and say no cost, then we are we are having people knocking at our doors hand over fist. And, you know, there's a line or like I should say, a waiting list to get on our podcast. So I that's just my per personal preference on why I don't charge. But um but actually buying me a cup of coffee has really worked. And I actually got that idea from another podcast group. Um, they were talking about the like 50% of the group is doing it. And I'm like, does it really work? And one lady actually has already um, gotten $500 off of the cup of uh, buy me a cup of coffee. And it's not only has that lured people to know what is cup buy a cup of coffee, but they also now have tuned into her or plugged into her show. And so now that's another way or another avenue of getting um, listeners, consistent listeners to her podcast. So yeah, it, it does work. I promise you. I never thought that it would, but I can say it, <laughs> it does work. So yes. At ACAST, we call kind of anything where an audience or a listener is interacting with a podcaster financially and directly. We call it direct listener support. Yeah. So things like Patreon is another big one where people make yes. money. Um, but even like throwing a few bucks to someone, I think that that to me is the, is the future of, of kind of podcast monetization in addition to advertising, but um, you know, advertising can be, you know, a, a fickle, a fickle medium. Um, yes. I'd love to hear though, particularly, particularly from Nadia, um, one of the questions I get constantly from new podcasters is how do you get up and running with getting sponsors? Like how do you find the sponsors? Is it cold outreach? You know, what does that look like? And Pamela, if you have other experience here too, feel free to chime in. Um, but I know Nadia, that's, you've talked about this extensively. Yes. With the advertisers, um, like I said, my niche is female entrepreneurs um, in my other businesses. So um, that is how I primarily tap into um, gaining advertisers, um, you know, sponsors, because it's not a lot of money, um, but it's some um, um, 
advertising for their business, you know, and so I speak with them or I put it in my groups and say, look, Power Conversations podcast has opportunities for sponsorship. I also have it um, when you sign up, I have a sign up link um, to be a guest. And when you sign up on that link, there's also an opportunity to be a sponsor. And so that is a, another way that, because like I said, I know that most of my guests are entrepreneurs or they have a business, a book or something, you know, that they would like to advertise. Um, another way is, like I said, posting on social media, you know, like we really have to stop using social media for so much personal. Um, and when we get into the business realm, utilize it for that because it's very valuable for um, building our businesses and building our brands because it's the people, the people are there. Um, and so, um, and like I said, they may not, you may be introducing people to a podcast. They have never heard, they've heard of it, but they're like, what's a podcast? What's, you know? And so, you know, then also referrals, y'all is another way, you know, um, even if you're not around entrepreneurs, business owners, um, people in that arena get ask for referrals. That's something that we have to utilize as well um, because people know people, you know, that need things and we can be the, the fulfillment of that. And so that that's my ways of gaining sponsorships and advertisers. I actually do this. I do the same thing. I, I'm around. Um, I'm connected to a lot of um, entrepreneurs. So I give them the opportunity um, to do some advertisement. Now, what I do do is anybody that's um, in the magazine that has has placed an ad in the magazine. I, I do offer them the opportunity to have a ad on the podcast. So, so they get it, not only will they get it in one media, they can get it in both medias. So I do play off of that as well um, as, and also to those of you who are just now starting out on Anchor, Anchor has where you can connect to some sponsors. And so the way it works is if you agree to allow them to put a commercial on your podcast and anyone that's fallen into the niche that you have designated, you earn money for that. And so that is the that is the most easiest way. And actually, I do that easiest way to get some gain some money it may not be a lot of money, but it is a way to gain some money as well. Absolutely. And yeah, platforms like Anchor Acast does something very similar where, you know, if you are a show in the business space and the brand buys in the business space, you know, running across a catalog of, of shows. So I think that's also like a really like low hanging fruit in terms of monetization. Um, so before we get to kind of final thoughts, I always ask this question every time I talk to podcasters. So sometimes podcast panels can be like a bit esoteric and very heavy and don't have a lot of concrete advice. I think the two of you have been so great at giving like really tangible advice, but let's say someone comes up to you piece of advice to starting my podcast. What would that one piece of advice to starting their podcast be? Do it. Just do it. You know, there's no harm. What, if, what do you have to lose? Um, just do it. And don't be hard on yourself because we all started at the beginning. And if your podcast doesn't sound the way you want it to sound, that's okay. You'll grow into it. But I always tell everyone, just do it. And don't worry. And don't be so hard on yourself. And don't worry about the critics. And I say, be consistent. Um, once you start continue like set a schedule don't be all willy-nilly with your podcast and treat it you know what you put into it is what you'll get out of it and so be consistent your audience will get to looking for you so you don't want to you know disappoint them because one week you're not there they're gonna be like let me go tune in to becky's podcast <laughs> and so be consistent in your podcasting and interviewing. Um, make sure that you have a system for gaining your guest. Both really amazing and tangible pieces of advice. Um, if there's any questions from, from the people who are, are watching, feel free to throw them in the chat. We'll kind of give it a few minutes or 
And if not, we can kind of move into just both of your closing thoughts, you know, um, any other things you want people to know about. And obviously, please plug your podcasts again, plug your socials, plug your brands. So not seeing any questions. Oh, what is the best way to get a guest? It's a question from Patrice. That was a good question. That's good. Um, one way to get to get a guest, the one way I get a guest is actually I go out and I look for other people or other women that are doing something similar on the same podcast as I'm doing that has some has a little bit of expertise, more expertise than I do. And I bring them on so we can come in and we can have a dynamic show is how I do it. I also do the, I also ask other women, I put out the ask. And there's no, there's no one has never turned down an ask. I ask them how, if anybody wants to be a guest on my podcast, if they fit in within these criteria that I said, and then I chat with them for a little bit before they become a guest. And so I just put it out there like that. In the way I get my guests, I also put it out there, um, of course, like I said, on social media, but on Facebook specifically, there are some groups that you can join that will, and I get the majority of my guests from these groups. Um, and you join them specifically to find guests for your podcast or to be a guest for um, a podcast and I set them up um, and I'm just reading some of the uh, questions. Um, and so I set them up according um, electronically. That's what I was trying to say. I was reading this other question. Sorry, guys. Um, but I set them up electronically. I have a Calendly account um, that I set up. And what well, first I send them through my MailChimp uh, landing page, right? And where they can do the questionnaire. And so you're asking how do you kind of reject them or accept them? You can um, do however you need. Even in Calendly, there's a way that you can set up a questionnaire. Um, but I like the landing page first because if they don't pass the landing page, they never get the Calendly link. <laughs> And so, you know, you don't have to be mean to anyone or anything like that. You can just, you know, return the email and let them know that you're booked or whatever your, you know, excuse is. And and so that is how I um, organize my podcasting schedule. And then I only take interviews on certain days. Right. Because we have, of course, other businesses, households, all that good stuff um, to tend to. And then. Any suggestions or no one cuts anyone off? So I think there's well, one. I'll stop there um, So because I don't want to get off off from Pamela answering some stuff, too. But, yeah, that's yeah. pretty much the first two questions. I think the, the next question I want to touch on, which I think is is. A, a one that I get a lot too is just how do you organize your podcast agenda? Do you use an electronic notebook, a pen or paper? So I think it's this touching on those outlines the two of you discussed earlier. You know, how do you organize that and, and how do you approach those? So funny enough, I, I have to have an outline. Even if it's in my head, I need to put it on a piece of paper. So I every day, and actually I have a podcast later, I have my notes and I literally write down intro. How long? And then I let me back up. I already have a um, outro coming in, an intro coming in. But then after it comes in, then I still have my intro of talking about the guests. Then I talk about what, you know, talk about what the podcast, the purpose of the podcast. And then I go into let's talk about the guests and then intro. And so I have a flow going through it. But to answer your question, yes, I do use paper. How I organize it, like I said, is the intro. Then I have another intro. I know it doesn't make sense to anybody, but it makes sense to me. And then I bring on the question, as I said earlier in the conversation, asking, are you sitting someplace that you, are you working at a job that you don't like? Are you doing something that you want to do, but don't know how to get there? 
then you're at a perfect place because I want to hit those pain points, but I want to, to connect on them. And also I do it at the beginning just to let everybody know. The reason why I asked that question at the beginning is because we only have so many seconds and it's been, so it has been shown so many seconds to keep your attention, keep everyone's, the followers attention. Mm -hmm. So that's why I hit it at the beginning. So I have their attention. And then we go into the conversation. Now I will say this, my podcast, I don't have questions lined up. What I'm going to ask is normal. It's very organic. We do talk on the pain points, but then from there, it's just organic and we move from there and that's how the podcast and we wrap it up with the fun. What actually as a fun thing we do is the book on the shelf, do it all the time. And then what they do and and that's how, how the show is constructed. I hope that answers our question. Yeah. And I use pen and paper and electronic <laughs> um, only because my history is as a mother of boys. Um, with pen and well, I'm not the pen, but the paper is not very um, good as far as keeping up with it or it not being stepped on, wastewater on, or something like that. So I do write my stuff down and then I type it um, in either I may put it in a format like in Canva or something, or I may just make it an email to myself. And that way I have it in my iPad. I have it if I need to pull it up on my computer, you know, because some days we are here, but we're not here. So we need a little help. And that's how I um, organize my agenda. And my show goes similar to Pamela's. So um, just having an outline of how you want your show to go, have an intro, a professional intro. Now I do in my intro, I tell what the podcast is about and what we discussed in the podcast. So that's about the only difference. But outside of that, the same structure as Pamela and do something fun at the end. And I also add my sponsorships at the end. And I do like a commercial maybe at the beginning, like a 15 second or 20 second commercial for my advertisers. And from like a best practices perspective, like reiterating what your show is about at the top of every show is actually a really great thing because you don't know when someone is going to tune in. Are they going to listen to episode one or episode 50? So I think that's a great piece of advice too. Um, I'll do maybe one more question and the question in the chat, and I'm going to sort of read the question and then rephrase it to, I think, a, a sort of more broad question. Um, so do you have any suggestions so no one cuts off anyone when speaking virtually? I think what this really gets at the heart of is your recording setups. So how do you record? What do you use? What do you record into? And what's your recommendation for how your guests should record? So yeah, feel free to take that as you will. Okay. Oh, go ahead, Pamela. No, you go ahead. Go okay. ahead. I can follow. No, no, no. <laughs> well, I use, um, I use my computer um, and the camera that's there. Sometimes I use uh, um, the outside camera. Um, because sometimes the camera on the computer um, doesn't match up with the, the voice. And so I do use an outside mic. I use, I'm not sure of the brand, but it's a condenser microphone um, that helps to make, oh, it makes everything sound so good. That was like one of the best investments I could have made for like 70 bucks. Um, and it's cute if you take pictures with your, <laughs> with your little setup. Um, but yeah, I use um, the professional mic. Um, Depending on what type of computer you have, you can use your computer camera um, and audio, but <clears throat> using StreamYard to stream um, the podcast offers you the ability to utilize it in several different capacities. So that's why I use StreamYard and then um, uploading it to Anchor or an outside uh, podcasting platform is pretty much the setup. 
actually, I do exactly what Nadia does. This is funny. I mean, I do exact the exact same, the exact same thing. I'm with you, Nadia. I bought my my little microphone. I'm like, oh, this is cute. I know, I know what you're talking about. So I really am. Um, but just having the the appropriate equipment. One piece of advice that I would love to also leave to uh, those of you that are um, on here: if you have guests that comes on, do not be afraid to. T- to let them know the items that what you're expecting from them. If you're expecting them to be in a quiet room, if you're expecting them to be lighting, tell them because what they don't know or what they don't know how you feel, it, it's, it, it makes a whole difference because then you know you're going to be disappointed about the outcome of your of your show. So I just want to lay that out because I know we we're talking about this, but please be just tell them, tell them, you know, tell them in the email, tell them when you're talking to them, however you do. But that's really one piece of advice I wanted to lay here too. Yeah. When I used to produce podcasts and work with a lot of guests and I worked for a book publisher that had a podcast network and I worked with a lot of book authors who had no idea anything about technology. And so I used to send you know a list of here's what to expect. And I always, always, always did this, which was I would record the Zoom or the Google Hangouts or whatever on the computer. And I would always have my guests recording through their phone. So I would say, put your phone up on top of a book, have it face toward your mouth and hit record, and then have them send me that recording after. So God forbid, you know, the Zoom cut out and there was a blip or there was something weird with the the connection. They had a backup that I could use and edit with. So I think this is you know, so great. I know we're almost at time. So I want to give you both a chance to plug what you want to plug. Feel free to throw, you know, links. And if you want to do emails into the the chat, um, I, I think, you know, you, you both have built these really great shows and promote them. We want to, we want to hear about them. So, and this will also be living in posterity on the Amplifying Her Voice YouTube channel. So, you know, keep that in mind too. Like it's not just the people here, it's everyone who watches after. Yes, yes, yes. So first of all, thank you so much for tuning in to our podcasting um, session today. I would love for you to follow me at WISPTV. Um, that is What's Your Superpower TV. And, and that's on Facebook and Instagram. You can also follow me on Linktree. And that's under Aries INTL. I will put it in the chat. Um, And that way you can get a link to everything that I have going on right there in Linktree. But if you want to know more about me, more about the podcast, just log on to NadiaFrancois.com. And all of the links are there as well to my social media pages. And don't forget to listen to Power Conversations podcast. Subscribe and you will be notified when every every Thursday when we have a new episode. I was just going to say that, Nadia, don't forget your pod. I was going to say, what's the name of your podcast? <laughs> you know, us podcasters have to support each other. So we make sure we get each other, connect with each other. But my podcast is What's Next Podcast for Women. You can find it on Facebook. You can also hear it on, on the larger platforms. Those of you who don't um, don't listen to Facebook. You can hear it on the Apple podcast as well as the Google. You can just find it in iHeartRadio, Pandora, all over. Um, if you would like to keep connected to the pod, to our podcast and want to know what episodes are coming up, drop me an email. I love to chat. Um, that's why I got into podcasting too. I love the chat. So I will definitely connect with you. You can connect with me on my email, which is what's next podcast the number four at gmail.com and I'll drop it in the feed below um, so you guys can connect to it too. But please connect to us and follow us. I podcast, we're going to take podcasts is going to take over, no offense, radio. So we're here to stay. So what help, what place to do it is to support us. Thank you. Totally agreed. And I, I am so grateful to have gotten the chance to chat with both of you. Um, and you can also find me at ACAST if you're, you're curious, link me on LinkedIn. Um, and it, I'm, I'm just so grateful. And I have two new podcasts to listen to. So, you know, you've one new listener at least. <laughs> um, so I'm going to, I'm going to kind of, I don't know how I end the session. I think it just ends, but 
you know, if there's people in the chat and you want to stay chatting, I'm going to hop off. But thank you all. Everybody, thank you. Thank you.